Hello everyone. I hope everything is going well. Thank you for being here today. Um, my disclaimers are in the description box down below. Um, today I just want to ask for a general message. I think that tends to be kind of my preferred style is just going with a general message. Um, I'm sorry if I seem a little bit off today, but I would like to start by doing some breathing exercises together with the singing bowl. And today this is the one that I'll be using. It has a higher pitch, but um, let's breathe in and breathe out together. <laughs> I definitely needed that and uh, perhaps you did too I hope that little bit helped <sighs> so today we're asking for a general message from spirit please what message do you have to share with us today of cups I feel like this one kind of wanted to come out too alrighty I think today I'm going to pull from the top so, let's see and I want to see what's underneath Tower in reverse. I do want to pull this card out. I'll put it over here. So I'm going to shuffle for more information down here. These cards just came out, so let's use them and see what they are. All right. And underneath the deck, we have the Six of Pentacles. I'm sorry for the glare, let me see if that helps a little. <laughs> Okay. <sighs> hmm. I 
feel like these two cards are really calling my attention right now. I feel like perhaps there's someone around you who is celebrating. Someone around you who seems to be very happy. And I feel perhaps you are also happy for this person or whatever it is that is going on. I feel like there's something here that is making you feel down to say the least there's something here perhaps someone is not coming forward to speak their truth we have the queen of swords in reverse and I feel like I feel like you or this person is portraying that they are very happy in their situation at the moment. But I feel like there are certain things that they're not letting people know. I feel like there are certain things that they are withholding from you or that you're withholding from someone else about a certain situation that is really causing someone to to feel some kind of anxiety and this person who's feeling the anxiety is trying to to view things from a different perspective I kind of see this as there's something going on around this person Perhaps uh, with friends, with co-workers, with family. There's a lot of celebratory energy or a lot of positive, happy energy from what this person is seeing. But I feel like beneath it all, there's more that has not been said. And I, I'm not sure if this is the same person or if this is someone else but if this is your energy then what I'm feeling is you are showing and portraying people that you're really manifesting what it is that you truly desire but deep down inside there are still things that you are facing within yourself things that you are struggling things that keep you awake at night and even though you're not sharing this information with other people, I do feel like people who are closest to you will definitely catch on to that energy. There's this, this uh, introspection that is going on, but I also see that there's also a desire for a new perspective, a desire for for change especially with the tower here now we have the knight of swords in reverse as well and so this is more energy of swords that is in reverse lack of communication um, difficulty when it comes to focus I feel like this can be really being up in your own head or someone around you being up in their own head really wanting to to plant the seeds for the future to to grow and and progress in life but what i'm seeing here is it's a very slow process not only do we all know, you know, you plant seeds, it's going to take quite some time for them to grow. But here with, with the Queen in reverse, the Queen of Swords in reverse and the Knight of Swords in reverse, 
there's not a lot of truthful, honest, open communication that is coming forward. And I feel like this lack of communication may be something that is really stressing you out, making something difficult for you. Perhaps you want to say something to someone. You want to speak your mind. You want to see a different perspective. But there's a lot of concern here about happiness, about how people will see you. How you portray yourself is what I'm feeling. You want to seem like you are successful, like nothing is bringing you down, like you're celebrating with friends. But deep down inside, there's this anxiety, this stress, this lack of sleep, lack of peace, especially in the mind. There's, you know, this kind of swords energy is very heavy, but with these swords energy in reverse, to me, that is just showing this more, if that makes sense. It seems to be amplifying that feeling of loneliness, of distress. Wanting to plant the seeds to a bright new future, but really with the devil card here and the hermit, what I'm seeing is there's this energy that perhaps you are trying to figure out why, why do you do this? Why do you keep so much to yourself? when it burdens you, when it literally just causes you to go within. But the, the need is to go within to face the difficulties, the challenges, the, uh, these negative energies within you. But I feel like when you go within and you try to view things from a different perspective, you're really just focusing on your outward appearance, on the portrayals that you give to people, how people see you. I feel like when you go within, you're not really going within to, to get away from this energy of being bound, of the negativity in your own mind, but rather you feel over encumbered by these overwhelming thoughts. Either you see someone succeeding or you want people to see you succeed, and it's really knocking on you. It's kind of, I feel like. Like you're really struggling to see something here about someone else. Is causing you to lose sleep. You're not opening up, you're not communicating, you're not moving forward to to convey the truth that it is that you want to convey. I feel like when you hang yourself up to to really go within when you're in this kind of energy of lack of sleep, of, of difficulty, of stress, I feel like what, what really comes to your mind is this, is someone else's happiness or something here is really, really interesting, but It's a good thing that you're trying to go within. But please be aware of your thoughts. It is important to go within to face our our challenges and to move away from the blockages that we feel in our own life. But when you're going within because you feel lonely and because of these things, but while you're going within, you're still focused on that energy. It's only going to keep you hung up.
I feel like there is a need to go within, but be aware of how you're going about it. Because we have two different cards here that are really, really do say go within, try to view things from a different perspective and all of these kind of things, right? But here, I see there's a, a difference between the two. I feel like it's important to be more aware of where you fall when you're doing this. Are you just going within to really just bring out the worst in yourself? To, to be angry with yourself? To tell yourself that you're not good enough or that you don't deserve to speak your truth? Or are you going within to, to heal? To celebrate the things that you have accomplished? To be grateful for the people in your life? to reflect on the seeds that you have sown and what it is that you're trying to build for yourself. I see there are a lot of blockages here and with the tower in reverse, what I'm seeing with the tower in reverse is there is a desire for change. There is a desire for a new beginning in something perhaps to build upon a stable foundation. You want to build upon a stable foundation to where something will not crumble and fall or be destroyed so easily. But I feel like there really is a lack of, of clarity here. There's a desire for change. There's the feeling like I know there needs to be change, but what is it? But what is it? But what is it? And I feel like you're overthinking. I feel like you're overthinking things and you want to change but you're not quite sure what it is that needs to change in order for you to have this happiness in order for you to to not have all these sleepless nights that you've been having you want to reciprocate something I feel like there's a desire to reciprocate I'm checking for another card there's a desire to reciprocate, but at the same time, I feel like there's this lack of knowing how to do so, how to go about it, how to change your circumstances, how to to approach a situation in a, a way that will benefit everyone involved. But underneath here as well, we have the two of cups and the lovers but here's the thing we have the two of cups upright and we have the lovers in reverse and below here we have the six of wands in reverse there's a desire oh wow Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is really off. I'm sorry if the energy feels very off today. Is that just me? <laughs> As I was saying, there's a desire to reciprocate. And I feel like this has to do with love. In particular, it's very interesting that of both both cards to come out side by side, the Two of Cups and the Lovers 
but one is upright and one is in reverse. And I feel like this is the same kind of energy that I was feeling of being in your mind, not quite sure how to go about a situation. I feel like this has to do with love. I feel like there's this desire within you to be successful, but you don't see the success happening. You want to reap what you've sown, but you're not quite sure what it is that you're reaping. You feel like perhaps, you know, did I waste my seeds on this? Like, did I, you know, I, I feel like you're really up in your head a lot about all of this that is going on. But deep down inside, it's like you want, you want something with this and you're not quite sure what it is. I feel like the lack of reciprocity has made you go within, has made you really think about loss, things that you've lost. I feel like you are trying to to see, you know, well, what can I, what what is still there? You know, maybe things are not being reciprocated, but is there anything left over? And here we have the Two of Cups. Technically, they would be upright, but they're in reverse. And here we have the Two of Cups. We had the Three of Cups as well earlier. The Three of Cups, here the Three Cups are spilt over. There's a situation that, that makes you unhappy. A certain outcome to a situation that makes you unhappy and perhaps it has to be in love but there's this desire to focus on rebuild or to to really figure out what it is that makes you happy and I feel like what is keeping you up at night is this but what you're trying to do is to to reevaluate your happiness and what makes you happy to reevaluate are you actually are you following your inner guidance you see there's like a sun rays here with with the hangman and then we have the sun here but the sun is in reverse There's a desire for a new beginning, a desire to end vicious cycles, a desire for reciprocity, but not knowing how to be successful, not knowing how to approach this situation with love, compassion, kindness, nurturing, like the Empress understanding, loyalty, devotion. There, there's a desire to, to have hope, to, to have a new beginning, to be hopeful about it, but again, I keep getting this feeling of not being sure how to go about it. Like you want to be hopeful about these things that are going on and you want to move forward. But I feel like you're really struggling to figure out what it is that you need to change within you or, um, you know, the people, places, things around you in order for you to have this happiness and this new beginning that you you so desire I'm kind of feeling called to pull from this deck
achievement, win the award, accolade, or contract. Power symbol to create lucky, serendipitous events. And I feel like this is bringing back the uh, Three of Cups energy with the serendipitous events win the award accolade i feel like that is the desired outcome is to have a victory in in this situation and under the deck we have earth ask the elements of earth for grounding stability and strength in times of chaos and i feel like this is exactly something that you need to do is to ground yourself especially when you're feeling so conflicted and so confused about what it is that you need to change in your life, what it is that brings you happiness in your life. And I just got the feeling like it is also possible, it does happen, that sometimes we think there's something in particular that makes us happy. But then we start to feel like, like it's not enough. And when we go within ourselves, we may come to find that the thing that we thought would make us happy is not the thing that we that makes us happy anymore. Or vice versa. Perhaps there's a situation in your life that you feel, you know, did not um, meet your frequency, so to speak. Something in the past that you know, didn't resonate with you back then, and perhaps now, if you go within, you may come to find that that thing may actually be something that makes you happy now. So I see it in both ways. Perhaps there are things in your life that have changed, whether you like it or not, and I feel like there are certain things that you don't want to change. But when you really go within, you'll find that there are things that have changed because you don't have the same perspectives on the things that make you happy as they used to. And I feel like there is a, a deep need for stability and grounding in order for you to, to really go within in a way that doesn't bring you down, but in a way to where you feel stable. In a way where you can... You can view your achievements not with like, oh, well, I mean, it's not good enough or blah, blah, blah. Not with that kind of bullshit, but like, hey, you know, I have come a long way. I'm not this person that I used to be. The things that used to make me happy, and now I realize they were just distractions. And certain things in my life that have helped me break vicious cycles within myself, I realize that those things have brought me happiness. I'm going to pull this from here. Let's see. reflection wow see all aspects of yourself through the reflection of the one who mirrors your hidden self wow and wasn't i just wasn't i talking earlier about reflection about reflecting upon you know your achievements about reflecting upon the things that make you happy in life or the things that don't make you happy anymore. Going within to, to really discover what it is that you need to change in your life. I mentioned this. And when it says... Through the reflection of the one who mirrors your hidden self... That is really just making me think of twin flame energy and then we have the two of cups and we have the lovers here 
I do feel like there is twin flame energy. There's a lack of reciprocity in a situation that's going on. And it doesn't, you don't have to take that twin flame word as what it is. It's just go with what it means to you. If it's just a connection that is really important to you or your soulmate connection, then fine. It doesn't have to be a twin flame. Take the name if it resonates and leave it if it doesn't. But I do feel like here, twin flames, if you, if you study a little bit more about it, you find that people who are having a twin flame experience in, this, in whatever lifetime incarnation that they're in, they are mirrors of each other. They will reflect upon each other the, the best and the worst. Being in a twin flame journey is fucking hard. And I saw 3111. 111. It, it's so fucking hard to be in a twin flame journey. It is. Because it's like, whether you guys try to or not, you're going to bring out the best and worst in each other. And it's not easy. It is not easy. People think, oh, you're, you're so lucky if you, if you find a twin flame, if you find your twin flame and, you know, so lucky. And it's, yes, it is a, a beautiful thing, but it is a fucking challenge to say the least. It's not easy. It is not easy. It is a long process of people coming together and really trying to discover who they who they are. Speaking of twin flames, we have two people in the back of this card and their third eye is open together. I, I was not expecting that. All of these cards have different backings. And I was not expecting that. Let's see, guidance. You are not alone. You are guided by masters and teachers of the highest realms. I'm going to pull that one. What I feel with this also is like if you're on the twin flame journey, just know that you are guided. Know that just because you're separate in the physical world, if you are separate in the physical world right now. And I mean, I've heard this so many times with other readers and it's one of those things that's like kind of it, it gets... I guess redundant in a way to hear but it is important but it is one of those things that's difficult to hear is the kind of thing like just because you're not together in the physical world doesn't mean that you're not together in the spiritual world on my clock I see 222 two, two, and not too long ago I saw 33 with the 3 It is frustrating to hear, like, you know, just because you're not together in the physical doesn't mean that you're not in the spiritual. And it is a beautiful thing to know that your, your twin flame's spirit is always with you. Even if they did not incarnate with you in this current lifetime, they are with you always. But that doesn't mean that it's not difficult. That doesn't mean that you don't have nights where you feel alone and you feel left behind or whatever the case is. It's not easy. I feel like this is a reminder that spirit is guiding your connection. Spirit is guiding your connection. And I think it's important to remember our light. 
It is time to reveal your radiant light to the world. And here we have the world card. Let's see what it looks like underneath. Truth, be honest with yourself and other people. And then like, oh, what's behind? Okay, with this card here, it's hard to see, but if you really pay attention, you can see there's a person here, like in a meditative um, position, and you can see the chakras. I feel like this is a call for meditation, for reflection, in order to go within, in order to align yourself. And I feel like there is definitely an emphasis in crown chakra and in heart chakra. Heal your heart. Open up your mind. Strength. You are being guided by the cosmos. Stay strong. A positive outcome is assured. And the back of this card, I see this woman... You know, sometimes it's really hard to just trust and have faith in our circumstances and what's going on and that things are going to turn out for the best. But it really is important to remain positive and hopeful that things are going to turn out for the best. Choice. By staying, by staying conscious in your thoughts, you guide your journey in the direction of choice. Remember how earlier I was saying be aware of your thoughts? Like when you go within, be aware. Are you just going within to say nasty things to yourself? Or are you going within to actually evaluate your circumstances from a non-judgmental perspective? And really, that is the way that you become the hermit. Is viewing things not out of judgment, but just viewing them for what they are. And trying to come up with the best solution that you can. By going within and understanding that it is up to you how you handle a situation. And here in the back of the card, we have an emphasis on the third eye. So follow your intuition. But we also have blues and we have greens. Green is the color of the heart, the heart chakra. Blue is a color of communication of the throat chakra. Purple is very intuitive. Let's see what we have here. Gaia. <laughs> Connect to the pulse of Mother Earth. She will guide you through this time of change. Change. Guidance. Reflection. Change. You want to change this energy? You should, and it's important to work on, on transforming these kind of energies into something that is bright. It's it's important to learn how to to be the the magician of your own life. And what is the magician? The magician is someone who understands how to manipulate energy. Someone who understands that everything in life is made up of energy. Everything. It is scientifically proven. Even this desk is made up of energy. A magician is someone who understands how to work with energies. And I'm seeing there is definitely an emphasis where you need to learn how to work with your own energy. You need to learn how to to be stronger in your mind and in your communication. Why do I say in your communication? Because again, we had the Queen of Swords in reverse. 
we also had, what was it, the Knight of Swords in reverse. I feel like there's definitely a desire for change. And again, we have, she will guide you through this time of change. There's a desire for change, but there's a need to stop fighting it, is what I'm feeling. It's like, you know that there are changes that need to happen. You want change to happen, but you keep fighting it. Why, why do you keep asking for it and then keep fighting it? And I feel like there's some guidance, something that spirit is telling you to reflect on, on yourself. On your thoughts. And what is it that you want? What is it... You really have to have an optimism for. You do have to look up and look brightly in order for you to see how strong you are. In order for you to see that there are events and, and times in your life where you, you should celebrate. Acknowledge where, how far you've come. View life with optimism. That does not mean to be ignorant towards the negative bullshit that happens in our life. It just means that you choose to, instead of be in this energy of the Nine of Swords upright, when you choose optimism, you choose the sun. So it's up to you. What do you choose? And I think it's as clear as day what you should choose. But that does not mean that it's going to come easy. Because there are things that you know that you need to change. And I feel like you fight the guidance. When you go within yourself, I feel like you are aware of these changes that you need to make in your life. And you fight it. For whatever reason. Maybe because it's hard. Maybe because it has something to do with love and you're not quite sure of what, what the outcome is going to be. But how could you expect the outcome to be positive if you're not being optimistic? How can you expect for change to happen when you keep refusing it? Because remember, this was in reverse. But this was also in reverse. So if this is the energy that you have going on right now, is that the energy that you want? The way that I see it is, we all get in this energy. But it is important for us to, to break away from that energy. To break away from from the negativity. In order to have a victory and to have happiness. I'm sorry for the glare. Be more optimistic about your life despite the shit that has happened to you. It's okay. Allow yourself to be optimistic. It does not mean that you are naive. It does not mean that you're foolish or that you're stupid just because you're, you're trying to learn how to be more optimistic in your life. 44. 4. And as I said that, it became 44. So stability, grounding, remember how earlier I mentioned grounding, you need to ground yourself, oh words of love, let's just go through these, they flipped up, 
Let's see if they're relevant. Grounding. I feel like that's exactly what Mother Gaia would want you to do. To connect with Mother Gaia. To connect with Mother Earth. That is how you ground yourself. The best way to ground yourself, the best grounding techniques, is to go out in Mother Nature. And if you can't do that at the moment because of everything that's going on that is understandable, then bring nature to you. Do you have crystals? Do you have sticks laying around? Do you have nature sounds and meditation and, you know? Find the things that can work for you in order to help yourself. Words of love speak with your heart. And I feel like, again, this may be a love situation. I'm sorry for the mess of cards. What? Ah, messy cards. <laughs> I'm out of it today a little bit. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's obvious. But anyway, with words of love, speak from speak with your heart. Again, this is going back to this energy. All right, I'm just messing up all the cards. Let's just mess it up some more, yeah? I'm sorry if you have OCD and I'm driving you fucking crazy. <laughs> this is communication. And if you want communication of love... Communicate. You got love and you got communication words of love share how you really feel with people express yourself express your thoughts express your emotions especially to the people that you love especially to the people that you're close to especially to the people you want to be close to virility shake it up a little you've got this I feel like this is saying there's a lot of stagnant energy. There's a need to really change your perspective and to to shake up this these thoughts that come to you in the middle of the night. These thoughts that creep up on you when you start thinking about love. I feel like you're so heavily guarded when it comes to love because you don't communicate how you feel. And you're afraid to let the tower fall. Shake it up a little. You've got this. That's really making me think of the tower. I'm sorry. Now my OCD is kicking my ass right now. <laughs> it's really like making me think of this. Let's try to... We're going to a little bit. I'm so sorry that this reading today is just super, super dead. <laughs> kind of low, low energy. And I'm, I'm feeling this, this energy. Let's continue. Okay, we had these two. We had grounding and optimism, insight. The answers are there for those who look. And what this is making me think of is, lo and behold, insight. This card and this one. The answers you seek are within you is the feeling that I'm getting from this. And you know that they're within you, but why do you fight it? Why, why do you run away from, from the truth of what really matters, from what really makes you happy? I feel like you try to ask yourself, why? Why am I the way that I am? Why do I do things the way that I do? Why do I keep fucking up? Time and time again. 
And I feel like that's a damaging way to to view it. I think it's not what you say, it's how you say it. And I think you should speak to yourself with more respect. Not not in a blaming, shameful way. But to be like, hey, you know what? Based on the patterns of my past relationships or based on the patterns of my life and things that are going on right now, what is it? What, what am I doing that needs a change? What needs a change in my life? And when you go within and you start to analyze these events and these things that have happened to you in your life, you'll come to find the answers are right there. But don't be so hard on yourself to where you're like, man, I'm just a fuck up and that's it. And it's just going to be the same thing again and again and again. Well, yeah, if you think that, then yes. If that is the kind of energy that you have, and that is the way that you're going to view your life, then yes, that is exactly what will happen. Because you're the magician of your own life. And if that is what you're, you know, creating within your own mind, then that is what you're going to get. But I think you need to know and understand that you deserve better than that. You deserve to... to to be grounded you deserve to really be grateful for the events for the things that have happened to you in your life and even the shitty things that happen to us in our life happen to share knowledge with us the shitty things happen in our life to build us up to make us stronger and I just looked down and saw this other card which was the last one that fell upright from that group of cards. Renewal. Time to begin again, stronger and better. And I feel like this is what you want. I feel like you want this renewal. But you're struggling to find out how to have it. And I feel like this is saying, first of all, when you want a renewal in your life, you have to make sure your thoughts are in check. You really, really do. Because if you go into a situation where you have not changed your perspective on things, you go into another situation with the same kind of mentality and the same shit's gonna happen, I guarantee you. If you're the type of person to lie about things and you realize that is something that has really affected your you know you when it comes to family when it comes to friends when it comes to uh, significant others if you realize that then there's a reason be mindful of your thoughts because they really do create your reality. And if you don't believe me, I challenge you, I dare you to give yourself some time, at least a week, to really prove it to yourself, to test it out for yourself. Because I guarantee you it will make a huge difference in your life. And with this card again, time to begin again, stronger and better, there are things, going back to what I was saying earlier, I feel like you know there are certain things that you need to cut out of your life. People, places, things, whatever it is. Thought patterns. The way you handle things or the type of people that you allow into your life. Be very, be mindful of these things, not to overburden you, but be mindful enough to where you can see the truth in them. 
that you can see what is the benefit to me lying? What is the benefit to me doing this or to me doing that? What has it caused me in the past? Oh, well, when I lie, it just ends up that I get caught in my lie. And then I lose someone's trust or whatever the case is. Whatever it is, it could be anything. But I'm bringing lies up because I'll, and lies is the first thing that came to my mind. And for a lot of people, it's so easy to lie. People don't... And I saw 55... With five... Change. Change. It's so easy for some people to to share a little white lie. I don't believe in such thing as a little lie. A lie is a lie. Half a lie is still a lie. Keeping something half secret is still a secret. Not being honest is still not being honest. A lie is a lie. And I don't see any benefit to lying about anything to anyone if you feel like you need to lie about something then that means you need to fucking take responsibility for your own actions and stop lying about it and if it's something that is gonna hurt someone the truth is gonna hurt someone why the fuck are you lying in the beginning why the fuck did you do it in the first place maybe that's what needs to change maybe that's one thing that needs to change and again, if you want renewal, you want something to be built stronger, then you need to build yourself stronger. When the tower falls and there's nothing, you have to clear it. If you want to build on the same area, you have to clear out all of the debris. And you have to start all over. You cannot build upon something that is mostly fallen apart. Why, so it could fall apart again? No. You learn built, uh, you learn based off of the faulty structure. So that way when you start building something new, you're like, okay, I can't use those same building techniques because they were not stable. I cannot keep lying to people who I expect to trust me. I don't know why I'm getting that. I feel like there's there's this feeling of running away. It's like these two people that are jumping out of the tower. Obviously, they were trapped, and maybe that's the only solution that they have. But I feel like when the going gets tough, don't be the type of person to get going. Be the type of person to stay strong. Where is... I was looking for that, that card. Where was it? The strength card that came out earlier. Look, I, I was pulling them aside, and the card that was underneath but at the top was love. Live your truth and share the love that is in your soul. Love. And we had the Two of Cups and the Lovers earlier. You need to be strong. Don't just get going when the shit gets tough. And I feel like maybe you did leave a situation before actually trying to reciprocate and be strong in a situation. Perhaps that's something that is causing you sleepless nights. Perhaps you lost an opportunity on something or someone because of... 
something that you were running away from. And I feel like it was something within you yourself. I'm not saying it doesn't have to do with anyone or anything else. Yes, there are always outside circumstances that, you know, make us, you know, sometimes end up doing something stupid. But I mean, it's, it's our responsibility to take responsibility for our actions. Don't get going just because the tough gets going. <laughs> I'm out of it today. Maybe you also feel out of it. Maybe being in your mind and being in your head all the time, you feel so exhausted to where you can't think straight. And that is also something to be aware of and to be careful of is you need to rest, you need to recuperate in order for you to see things more clearly, in order for you to build a build anything you have to have enough sleep so that you're not like a zombie just hammering away at who knows what you need to have a stable state of mind you need to be focused you need to be awake for you to build something or else it's gonna fall apart again these are the cards that fell out face down and I'm gonna pull them to enthusiasm I guess again be more optimistic and enthusiastic in the situations in your life it says the best can be here believe it but if you don't believe it it's not gonna happen because if it were to come to you and you're still in the uh, the Five of Cups energy, then you're going to let that shit pass you by. If you're still in this energy. Enthusiasm is, is realizing what's behind you. And being grateful for it. And going after it and be like, oh, hey, you know what? These three cups, they spilled over, but I still have these two cups. Be more in enthusiastic. And with Orange Blossom, I'm thinking of, was it the Sacral Chakra? Which is the orange one. The second chakra, which is about creativity. About confidence about sexuality and I'm seeing here there's a need to to work on your lower chakras I remember earlier I was talking about the higher chakras and I'm talking about lower chakras because we had you know we had the strength card we had earth for grounding so perhaps you're just feeling out of whack in general. And I think you should maybe consider doing a cleansing of your energy. Perhaps Reiki or listening to some kind of meditative music to align your chakras, to bring you peace. I think that's something that would definitely be good for you let's see what this other card is clarity and I do think that doing that clearing your chakras will bring you clarity because when we are calm and centered and balanced within ourselves that is the the best easiest time for spirit to give us guidance and messages and guidance was one of the cards that came out earlier guidance Bright paths of understanding will open, is what this card says. Now you will not be able to notice when new paths open up if you're not paying attention. 
if you're so focused in your head with literally your hands in your on your face you're not going to notice anything that happens around you you're not going to have any clarity because you're so damn in your mind in a negative way realization the answer is here take heed this is making me think back to in the beginning of the reading I was pretty much saying how I feel like there are changes that you want or changes that you know need to happen in your life but that you are either in denial of it or fighting it for whatever reason and I feel like this realization is about the changes that you need to have in your life to benefit you, to help you reach your happiness, to help you reach your goals, to help you become the greatest version of yourself. You need to realize that the energy is already there. You are already great. You're already smart. You're already, you know, talented. You just need to realize it and practice it, put it into practice. remembrance memories and the past hold the key memories of the past hold the key where is it this and this is what I'm getting the feeling of for this Remember the good times. Remember what makes you happy. And I'm not saying something that just makes you temporarily happy or, you know, just because, let's say, for example, if you like to drink, I'm not saying to follow, it's not the drinking that makes you happy. What is it about the drinking? I don't know why I'm bringing this up. I feel so scattered. I feel this energy. I just <laughs> kind of, I said I feel scattered and I just, I had to touch this piece of black tourmaline. Perhaps you want to work with black tourmaline. And this is mica as well. Perhaps you want to work with black tourmaline to help clear some negative energy that you feel around you. And please do not resort to drinking when you feel like this. Please. When you remember the things that have happened to you in your past, view it with understanding and compassion. I mean, shit, it already happened. There's no, no point in fighting it, but there's also no point in being an asshole to yourself about it. going within to figure it out to view things from a different perspective but you need to be kind to yourself you need to be compassionate to yourself cooperation take the hand offered or ask the cooperation card is making me think of the uh, the lovers, the lovers and the um, the two of cups. It 
if you want to work with someone, you want to cooperate, you want to reciprocate, like the Six of Pentacles that also came out, but I've been going through the cards so much. If you want to cooperate with someone, then what's holding you back? And I saw one hour, ten minutes, and twenty-three seconds. One, two, three. You need to take the steps necessary. When you have a thought in your mind and you want to, to pursue it, then do it. What's holding you back but yourself? Be honest about how you feel. Be open about how you feel. In order to cooperate with someone, in order for there to be a stable foundation, you need to cooperate. You need to compromise. You need to work together. You need to be strong together. Not just one person, not just the other person, but together. I've seen them once right now. Really go within and ask yourself, what is it that you really want? What is it that really makes you happy? I feel like, again, I feel like perhaps there are things that you want to convey or share with someone, but you're so much in your head that you doubt yourself and that you don't come forward because you're afraid to speak your damn mind but you need to speak up the only way for you to really be happy is for you to be able to learn how to speak your mind so you're not bottling up all of the emotions that you have and when when you start speaking your mind it is healthy for you. You're opening up your, your throat chakra. You start to speak your mind. People start to know who you really are. People start to understand what you really want. People start to take you more seriously. Because they know what you want now. Everything is falling. Oh, this reading is <laughs> a mess. I'm sorry. This reading is a mess. Caretaker of the lost, respite, assistance, and memory. Now, when it comes to the word assistance, remember how we had the guidance card? Those just want to come out. Blue flame, connect with blue flame, which is the light of pure love within you. Interesting. And we're talking about love. Dreams, the universe speaks to you through dreams. And I was literally about to mention the, gui the guidance card. The guidance card that came out earlier, assistance. Spirit does try to communicate with you, but I feel like you just push it away. When spirit has something to tell you that you don't like it, you don't want to hear it because you don't want to admit that you're wrong or you don't want to admit this or that, or you don't want to deal with the actual changes, Spirit's giving you the guidance. It's up to you to take it. I feel like they do speak to you in your dreams. 
Maybe you have reoccurring dreams. Maybe there's uh, animals in your dreams or certain symbology that you can look into to see um, if spirit is um, putting specific messages for you to pay attention to. Like when I have dreams, I usually do remember very specifically like animals that, that end up in my dream. And I look up the meaning of those animals. And usually it's always very relevant. So if you see animals, spirit animals, spirit guides, you see anything like that, really try to analyze your dreams for deeper meanings. It is easiest for spirit to communicate with us through our dreams because we are in a, a state of... surrender we do not have control over our mind when we are dreaming you know what I mean it's easier for spirit to communicate with us our third eye is wide open when we're dreaming it's easier for us to see and hear messages that they have for us without being so judgmental about it but at the same time so many people discredit their dreams I feel like you need to follow your intuition. And like one of the cards we had earlier was insight. Insight, eyes, intuition. Inner worlds. There's a lot of green in this card. Inner world. Making me think back again to the heart chakra. You think your mind knows you? Better, excuse me, better than your heart? Fuck no. I don't care who you are. Your heart knows you best because your heart is your soul. Your heart is your physical, is the physicality of your soul. Your heart is the gateway to your soul. Your heart is what leads you to your most purest desires. Your heart is never wrong because your heart is your spirit. And with the inner worlds, let's see what it says, your existential world. I'm sorry. Why did I even... More complicated word. <laughs> Your external world is a reflection of your inner world. Yes, it is. That goes back to what I was saying earlier about thoughts. Your thoughts create your reality. You need to realize and take responsibility for your outer world, for the things that are happening in your life. Because you're creating your life. And that does not mean that people who come and go or who treat you wrong, that doesn't mean that's okay. That doesn't mean that you're begging for some shit to happen. No. It might mean, though, that if there's certain types of people that keep coming into your life, maybe there's patterns within your actions and the type of people that you're attracted to that need to break in order for you to have this change. In order for you to find a stable, committed love that brings you happiness. And it's always important to love yourself. And to treat yourself with respect. You first need to love yourself in order for someone else's love to really mean more. Without it be coming codependent or anything like that is my hand knocked these cards a little bit and the card that is underneath is magnificence you are amazing magnificent and unique but most importantly you are enough and fruition Rest assured, your dreams and visions will come to fruition. So 
So I was, as I was saying, you are the magician of your own life. Your thoughts create your reality. What reality do you want to create? What reality are you creating? And when there's pers people, places, and things that keep coming into your life that keep taking advantage of you or keep treating you like shit, you need to cut that shit out. You need to be like, all right, I'm done. I'm done with that. I'm going to close this cycle of chasing people who are emotionally um, unavailable or people who don't open up or people who lie or people who, who cheat or people who do this or people who do that. Usually when there are people, types of people or situations that keep happening in our life, it's to help us realize that we are in a cycle and it is up to us to break that cycle. Because, for example, if you always end up in relationships where people take advantage of you, you know, it's not... It's not to say that what the other person is doing is okay. And it's not to say that they don't have their own lessons. Fuck yeah, we all do. But you take responsibility for your life. And when you notice someone trying to take advantage of you or trying to teach you or treat you like shit, you see the warning signs. I mean, hello, you've experienced it time after time after time again. If it's something that you keep experiencing it, maybe it's not the other person. Maybe it's something within you. And that's something that is hard to, to come to terms with. Is to stop saying, oh, well, they're all the same and they're all the same and it's all because of this. It's like, no. Well, maybe what you should do when someone tries to take advantage of you is put your fucking foot down and be like, uh-uh, motherfucker, no. Uh-uh, you are not going to treat me like that. Treat me with disrespect and you can get the fuck out this door. Bye. Bye, Felicia. Whatever the case is. And I'm not saying you, don't be a bitch about it. You know what I mean? I don't think you should be a bitch about it. But just to understand that you have more say in everything in your life than you may be taking responsibility for. And it is important to be very cautiously aware as much as possible without, you know, being in our head like the Nine of Swords. To be aware of what we are creating in our own life. And our 23 and 13 is what I saw. One, two, three. What are you building? What are you creating for yourself? and for your future. And with this Magnificence card, I would like to read it again for you. Magnificence. You are amazing, magnificent, and unique. But most importantly, you, you <laughs> are enough. Damn right you are. And you need to know it. You need to own it. You need to claim it. And know that no one should be treating you like shit. Not even you. You should not be treating yourself like shit. With this, um... With this blue flame here. That says, uh... Pure love within you. Connect with blue flame. It's making me think of the violet flame. The violet flame. And actually I have this here that my sister gave me. <laughs> An energy. A psychic energy. This is from Pokemon. And my sister gave this card to me. It's making me think about the uh, energy of the violet flame which I believe is um, something that uh, Archangel Michael is well known for, is for his healing violet flame. So if you feel 
called to look more into the violet flame is about healing I definitely would recommend doing that going back to the memory we did have the card about memory earlier and I feel like this is saying again evaluate your past in order to help you progress now evaluate your past not to feel guilty or ashamed or angry with yourself or other people but to heal it like the violet flame to, to view it with love like the blue flame in order for you to break the cycles in your life that you need to break so that you can accomplish what it is that you want to accomplish and, and so much more there is so much more to that I feel like maybe you feel like you're juggling a lot in your life right now. The thinker. <laughs> the father of knowledge. I'm sorry to laugh. It's just, remember how earlier I said you're always in your head. You're in your head thinking, thinking, thinking. I mentioned earlier with the Nine of Swords, the Queen of Swords in reverse, and what was it, the, the Knight of Swords in reverse? A lot of thought energy, a lot of thoughts. Let's see what this says. Knowledge, instruction, reinvention. So it's the same. You have the, the knowledge within you to go within, to figure out what it is that you want, what it is that you need, to follow that instruction, that inner guidance, and the external guidance from your spirit guides, from whatever it is that you feel resonates within you. And reinvention, to rebuild yourself. Like the tower, when the tower has fallen, it's up to you. Are you going to rebuild? Or are you just going to let it stay crumbled? Excuse me. It's up to you to reinvent yourself in the way that helps you go after the things that, that you love and that make you happy. You need to take responsibility for your actions and your thoughts we have here like like there's this energy going into his crown chakra you have that knowledge within you you write your own story it's like yes to some degree you know we have a you know, our destiny in this lifetime, the way that I see it is our spirits deciding to come back into this lifetime and decide then, before reincarnation, what our heart is going to, to draw us towards. But in the end, with free will, you write your own story. I mean, you can follow your destiny, and how do you do that? By following your heart. Your heart is always the truest, most pure embodiment of you. Your heart. That is why they say your heart will never lead you astray. Because your heart knows you better than your mind. Trust me. Our mind is what confuses us. Our mind is what makes us 
not believe in ourselves. Our mind is what tells us that we're not good enough. Our mind is what tells us that, oh, well, this happened before, it's going to happen again. We need to have logic and we need to protect ourselves. But if we really want true happiness, it comes from the heart. And everyone's true inner compass is different. Everyone wants to be something different in life. Perhaps your goals in life are different from mine. And that's okay. As long as, you know, do as I will harm none. But take no shit. Follow your inner compass. That is why it is there. Your inner compass is your guidance. Your heart is your truest form. Your heart is the closest thing to your higher self because your heart is your higher self. The heart knows what it wants. Let's see what's underneath. This card came out in the last reading, I believe, for uh, one of the piles. Motherhood, ferocity, and creation. Be aware of what it is that you are creating. And with the butterflies, you see the butterflies? With the butterflies, this is again a call for change not to be in denial not to be afraid not to fight the change but to to see the beauty and how it's going to lead you to better more prosperous more understanding more loving more compassion more everything in a positive way We all need to make changes in our life in order for us to progress. Think about it. There are people who are 50 plus years old acting like they're big babies because they refuse to change in their life. And so they're going to still act like a big ass baby. Just speak. Age don't mean shit. Really. I mean, there are people who are wise because of their age, because of their experience, but there are also people who are wise who are younger, who, who really seek to reinvent themselves, who really seek to create who they really are, to follow their heart, to pursue that. There are people who are very connected since childhood. So really, age doesn't mean shit. Always respect your elders, yes. But just because someone's older than you doesn't mean that, you know, that they have the best advice. I know people who are more than twice my age who act less than half my age. And it is pretty fucking sad. And when you ask yourself and when you try to analyze, okay, why? Why are they the way that they are? Because they refuse to change. They refuse to make changes in their life. They refuse to take responsibility for their own actions and for their way of thought and for the way that they do things. And they'd rather blame everyone and everything else around them than to take responsibility for who they are and what they want to be. I would recommend not holding grudges on people. Grudges, it's so true. The, the only person a grudge really hurts is yourself. If you really want to reinvent yourself, if you really want to stand in your, in your power, giving away your power by holding a grudge is not going to help you get there. In my personal opinion. 
with this motherhood, I'm getting the uh, that feeling of the of the empress that came out earlier. Be compassionate, be loving. You see, there's a lot of green here. I'm thinking about the heart chakra again. What's this? Guardian of Saints. Humility, disillusionment, and champion. Making me think of the Ace of Swords. Again, there's a lot of thought energy, a lot of swords energy. Like the Empress, have humility, have compassion, have empathy. Disillusionment. Again, go within yourself to view your situation and to view what's going on not in a way of, t of judging yourself, but to destroy the illusions, the lies that you tell yourself. I'm not good enough. I'm not this enough. I'm not blah, 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 blah. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Stop lying to yourself. You're creating your own illusions. You're lying to yourself. With this this sword in reverse is making me think of the Ace of Swords in reverse. A lack of clarity, a lack of judgment, a lack of communication. And she's alone. So I feel like this is you doing this to yourself. But you can you can accomplish, you can overcome it. You will be the champion. You will be victorious. Like the the Six of Wands upright. We had the Six of Wands in reverse at the beginning of the reading. It's not over. I don't know. I see gravestones and I feel like... Maybe you're looking back at a memory and you feel like this is just completely dead and over with. And I feel like you don't know that. You don't know that. If it's something that's really in your heart. I'm shuffling them backwards. If it's something that's really in your heart. Then it's in your heart for a reason. To, to analyze it, to break vicious cycles, to, to ask yourself why. Downcast pride, I feel like, are you the type of person who, who doesn't like to admit when you're wrong? Who doesn't like to apologize even if you've, caused something apologize when you need to apologize it's not a sign of weakness honestly to me someone who can apologize when they're wrong or admit they're wrong is a strength Be careful with the roots that you're planting. And again, be, be aware of your thoughts because your thoughts are also like roots. We have roots here that are going down to the earth, being grounded, like we had ground uh, earth energy earlier for ground uh, grounding. I'm uh, sorry, you can't speak. <laughs> but also here at the mind. We need to be grounded, but we also need to be imaginative and creative and really thinking in order to create our reality, but we have to be grounded enough to make it come into fruition. Naked Before the Stars. That is a card that also came out 
in one of the piles in my last reading. Naked before the stars. I feel like you don't like to feel vulnerable. I feel like perhaps you may feel like all of this is a sign of weakness. Admitting that you're wrong, a sign of weakness. Following your heart, a sign of weakness. Like a very... Hmm. Again, I feel like you're lying to yourself. And that you're not seeing things clearly. To be naked before the stars is to, to be vulnerable. To be vulnerable is to share your most intimate self. To be naked before the stars is to have hope despite the cold. I don't know why. I That just came to my mind. And what do I mean by that? To be hopeful before the cold. Hopeful, making me think of the stars, the star card in tarot. Vulnerability. Because we are the most vulnerable when we're naked. Vulnerability is about opening up, about communicating. And again, there is a lot of energy here about communication or lack thereof lies, a lot of uh, energy of the inner mind, you know, you being conflicted with yourself. Be vulnerable. It's not easy. It is hard to be vulnerable. It is. But when you're honest with yourself, and you're honest with other people, that is when people and you start to see who you really are. And it's just coming out again in, in my head, like, don't expect people to trust you if you're lying to them about who you really are. If you're lying to them about anything. Don't come around saying, oh, you need to trust me. You, you don't trust me, but why does this person not trust you? Maybe it's because you lie to them all the time. Maybe it's because they know you're hiding things and they feel that energy and they feel it so strongly and you're, you're denying them. You tell them, no, it's not true. I'm not lying to you when you are, if you are. I'm speaking to the kind of people who do lie and who do that, you know. I don't believe that all of you are those kind of people. And again, with everything, every tarot reading, take what resonates and leave what doesn't. As long as you're going within and being honest with yourself, is this something that you're lying to yourself about? Are you lying to yourself about lying to yourself? Underneath the deck is this card. I won't cry for you. 22. And this makes me feel sad. I feel sad with this. I feel like this has to do with the lovers here. I feel like there's a separation and I feel like there may be denial of why it happened. I don't think it's right to, you know, point fingers and say, well, he did this and well, she did that and blah, blah, blah. But it is important to realize the mistakes that we make in our relationships 
it is important for us to to catch ourselves and to be like whoa why am I doing this why am I lying why am I cheating why am I stealing why am I whatever the case is but I feel like this I won't cry for you is like you're in denial about your feelings about something or someone and you're saying I won't cry for you I feel like is a way that may be like you're still putting all the blame on that person or I won't cry for you because again like I said in the very very beginning of the reading perhaps you're trying to show people that you're strong Perhaps you're trying to show people that you're you're happy and that you don't have shit going on. We all got shit going on, I'll tell you that. First of all. Second of all, why would you want to portray yourself as someone that you're not? Because again, with Naked Before the Stars, you should be your authentic self. And if people don't like it, then why are they in your life anyway? right I mean none of us were put here on earth to follow blindly to someone else we are each very unique and different and we all have a different purpose in life because we're all meant to fulfill that to follow our hearts and to feel our greatest desires but we have to do that we have to decide for it for ourselves and you don't think it's scary for for a musician for their first time to go out in public and play a show you don't think it's it's hard for an artist for their first you know time that they're sharing their art that they're not worried about what other people think you don't think a dancer is worried like oh maybe you know maybe my feet might get kind of caught up I'm so nervous. Whatever the case is, you don't think that these people, when they first started, were not as nervous as you? I doubt it, because I'll tell you what, each and every single one of us, no matter how motivated and determined you are, we each have fear. So all of these successful people, whether they're artists or musicians or authors or actors or whatever the case is they didn't get there overnight they had to push past their fears they had to be vulnerable looking at themselves they had to be vulnerable putting themselves out there for other people to start to see their work that doesn't come easy you really have to push past your own boundaries and past your own mental bullshit in order for you to really achieve and accomplish what it is that you desire. Two and two is four, four is stability. In order for you to build a stable foundation, you need to be honest with yourself about what it is you even want to build in the fucking first place. That's step one. You know what I mean? And this I won't cry for you, I feel like you're in denial about something. You you hide who you really are. And I feel like with this specific card it may be specifically correlated to love. Don't think that just because people don't see you cry about a situation doesn't mean that they don't know that you're heartbroken. And just because you don't cry doesn't mean that you're strong. Crying is a strength, in my opinion. People are raised to believe, especially men, Especially men are raised to believe that crying 
isn't good or that crying is weak or some fucking stupid bullshit. That's fake. That's bullshit. I don't give a fuck if you're a man or if you're a woman or you don't like to consider yourself either or I don't care. Crying is healthy. Crying is a strength. I would much rather cry like a fucking crybaby than end up punching someone in the face because I'm pissed off. And I'm that bitch that when I get really frustrated and angry, I start crying. And I'm like, you know what? Thank God I'm crying because then I'm not going to throw a fist. I'd rather cry than be angry. Personally. It's okay to cry. And it's okay to cry in front of people who you love and who you trust. It does not mean that you're weak. It means that you're being vulnerable. And being vulnerable is the first step to being authentic. Because when we have our guard up, when we're so focused about what we or what whoever else thinks about us, we're not being authentically us. We're not being true to ourselves. And we're not allowing people to see our true self. And to me, that is not a strength. To me, that is the complete opposite. It is a fear-based reaction for self-preservation. What are you preserving yourself for? If you need to cry in front of someone, then do it. If you need to release your energy in some way, then do it. And I think crying is a perfectly healthy way to release energy instead of bottling it up and being angry at everyone and everything and fuck the world and the world hates me. Like, no, calm down. Take responsibility for your actions. Don't allow people to treat you like shit. Cut it off. But also allow yourself to express yourself. Again, to me, it is not a strength to, to bottle shit up. That is not strong. To me, that's weak. Because to me, that means that... That... We all have shit. We all handle it differently. And it's not completely weak to bottle shit up. I understand why some people feel the need to. And in certain situations where there's abuse or other things that go on usually people who bottle shit up it's because they have been in abusive relationships or abusive families or you know it is so sad because the people who protect their emotions the most are usually the people who've experienced some fucking atrocities in their life. So I'm sorry that I said it's a weakness. But I would definitely recommend that you consider opening up and being vulnerable. We all deal with things differently and we all have different perspectives. So perhaps for you, bottling things up is a strength because maybe you were abused to where if you can't, if you're going to cry or you're going to speak up, then you're going to get it. 
and that's not right. I feel like this is a call for you to release. You know, we had a lot of cards. We have cards about choice, cards about strength, about guidance. I feel like perhaps this person who says I won't cry for you has cried so much and will probably never admit it to anyone. I feel like they cried so much it's like they're nearly crying blood. I feel like this just got real, it, it got really, really heavy. I just want you to know that it's okay. It's okay to, to express your emotions. If you feel like it's hard for you to express your emotions, you know, wearing your emotions on your sleeve. You know what? Spark up your creativity. Use those emotions in your creativity, in your music, in your art, in your acting. You know, if you're in theater or something. The most beautiful art, music, and creative anything is created with pure emotion. Whether it's happiness or sorrow, what are the songs that we feel the most resonate throughout our whole body? The songs with some actual fucking lyrics. The songs that are deep. The songs that give you chills like, wow, that was, that was deep. That was a strong message. Right? What is the kind of art that really moves you? Even if you don't know what the fuck it is, it just squiggles or something. But you can feel the emotion from the creator, whether they're a musician or they're an artist, you feel the pure emotion. Some people who bottle shit up, sometimes their greatest strength is, is expressing their emotion through their creativity. And so I feel like if you're one of these people who really struggles when bottling things up, we all have shit that we have to work on. And again, I'm sorry I said it was a weakness. Again, I understand why certain people do certain things. We all have experienced different things and have different traumas. I think if you're one of those people who really struggles to trust other people, to really, who really struggles to open up, then I really do believe with all my heart, mind, body, and soul that you should really use that energy in in your creative process. Perhaps that's what this message was. This long ass fucking me talking about it. Perhaps in short was to tell you use your creativity. Use your pure emotion in your creativity like art therapy or whatever the case is look into it I think it's something that will help you understand yourself better something that will help you share your creativity better and more authentically I wish I could give you a hug 
I, I do feel this is heavy and I feel like these may be things that you have to go within yourself to really face your past and this could be childhood traumas this could be past relationships and I definitely do believe that it is also that you need to go within yourself in order to heal your own self-inflicted wounds. <sighs> Let's see here. I'm gonna move on. <laughs> Step out of your comfort zone. Your commitment is being tested. Your hard work is paying off. Step out of your comfort zone. I feel like that is a direct correlation to expressing your emotions and being vulnerable. It takes stepping out of your comfort zone to be vulnerable. It takes stepping out of your comfort zone to share your, your emotions. It really is a, a test to your own commitment to yourself. How committed to yourself are you? Are you committed to yourself enough that you are willing to make changes in your life? To benefit your life? To be authentic to who you really are? To show people who you really are? But I feel like also, because earlier in this reading we are talking about the lovers and the two of cups. I feel like this is testing your commitment to that person. I feel like this card wants to come out. A time to give rather than to take. Allow yourself to give to yourself. Stop taking from you. Stop, stop lying to yourself is what I'm seeing here. You need to give to yourself before you can give to others. In a way where you feel like you have enough. First of all, you are enough. Like we had the card earlier. You're always enough. And you need to know that and you need to believe it. I feel like now is the time for you to heal. We have green here again. Making me think of the heart chakra again. A time to give rather than to take. Give yourself love. And stop taking from your self-esteem. Stop taking from... From who you really are. It's time to go within to acknowledge what you want in your life and to pursue it. Stop taking from yourself in the way of like saying that you're not good enough because you really are taking from yourself. You're taking away your happiness. You're taking away everything when you tell yourself that all that bullshit. Confidence is your key to success. Be confident in yourself. Fuck yeah. Own it. And here we have orange and yellow energy making me think of the sacral chakra. 
again, which is about confidence, self-esteem, creativity. A few cards came out. The answers you need are coming. I feel like the answers you need are within you. A personal e issue reaches resolution. And have faith in your dreams. When we go within, we're able to resolve past issues. It doesn't mean that, again, it does not mean that it's okay what he, she did. It's not okay, you know, when, when people do bad things to us. It's not okay. And healing is not saying that it's okay. Forgiving is not saying that it's okay. It's saying it's okay for you to move past the pain. It is okay. It is safe for you to to go within because the answers you need are within you. They're coming. But they're already there. You already know. When you go within to heal yourself, you're able to reach resolutions to past events that still haunt you. And you need to have faith in your dreams. You need to believe in yourself no matter what. I don't give a fuck if it was your parents or your significant other or a friend. It doesn't fucking matter. Your dreams deserve to be pursued. You deserve to reach your happiness. You deserve to be understood. But you need to do that all within yourself first. You need to understand yourself better. You need to trust in yourself better. You need to be honest with yourself better. Don't be like wishy-washy with yourself. You know what I mean? Like we all have our days where sometimes we're more confident or, or something more than other days. That's natural. But always try to work on your self-love. Because when you do, everything else will fall into place. Everything else becomes easier in life when you start to love yourself and understand yourself. You start to love and understand people in a much deeper way. Know thyself. To pull this card was sticking out. Balance, spirituality, and practicality. Finding inner balance, going within. I said, I think I did mention earlier about meditation, about going within, you know, with the hermit card and the hanged man. Go within to figure out what you need in your life, to create balance in your life. That's what I'm feeling here. And do what you need to do to make it come into fruition, to make it come to life. A fiery climax approaches Aries. Don't be so stubborn. Don't be so stubborn with yourself. Be, be more flexible with yourself. Be more understanding and compassionate with yourself. And that's the message I keep hearing. Good luck. We have a black cat. Black cats or cats in general symbolize intuition. We have acorns, which are making me think of um, planting seeds. 
again, thinking about what it is that you want in your life, planting the seeds for it, watching it grow. From the tarot that we had earlier, we had the Seven of Pentacles, which is about planting seeds and watching them grow. Be patient with yourself. Do not compare yourself. I'm seeing with the, the cat's green eyes. Don't be envious. I just noticed there's a leprechaun with a pot of gold. Beyond the rainbow is a new beginning. Beyond what we can see is great abundance. And it's there and is waiting for us. We just have to, we have to follow it. We have to follow that path. And the heart will lead us to that path of great abundance, is what I feel. Underneath we have fertility, so again with the acorns, planting seeds, watching them grow. You need to know what you want in order for you to pursue it, right? You have to go within yourself to know what you want, so you can make plans for what it is that you desire and so that you can practically start to pursue it. All these cards. Some cards are so they're so big it's hard to shuffle. This one's still sticking out. Manifestation. I was talking about earlier manifestation. Our minds create our reality. Manifestation, you are the magician of your own life. Take life by the horns. Banish any energy around you that is not helping you. Full moons are the perfect time to do like banishing energy, uh, banish negative energy. New moons are the perfect time to, to um, bring in abundance. And prosperity was underneath. And with good luck and the leprechaun, the pot of gold, I do believe that, you know, the prosperity is there waiting for you. You just have to get out of your own damn way and... And follow your heart. And be real with yourself. Be honest. Be authentic. With yourself and with other people. Freedom. Know that you have the freedom to express yourself. Don't cage yourself. And don't allow other people to cage you. Strength. We had strength earlier. And here it is again. We're going back to this. You are free to express yourself. There's a dragonfly. There's a key. It's kind of like the dragonfly is bringing her a key. Dragonflies can also be a symbol of transformation, and so what I'm seeing is the key, the key to your freedom is transformation, to follow your heart. You see how her heart chakra is beaming? To follow your heart is the key to your happiness. To follow your truth is the key to your freedom. And no one can take that away from you unless you allow them to. I will say I know from experience what it's like to feel like you cannot be yourself. But I also know what it's like from experience to be controlling. And neither are okay at all. It's not okay to experience that kind of energy, and it's not okay to make someone go through that kind of energy. You live and you learn 
and sometimes you learn the hard way. This is showing you are free. Express yourself. Be real. Be authentic. Be who you really are. And that is your strength. But you need to forgive yourself. It's okay to be sad. And perhaps it was you need to forgive family. Perhaps family, remember how I mentioned abuse? Perhaps that's something that you struggle with deep down inside. It's okay to grieve the past. It's okay to reminisce. But we have to get to a point where it's like, okay, now I cried, I felt the emotions, I went through it. I'm viewing this process, what am I learning from it? And transform and transcend. It's like the butterfly's head is beaming The blessings, blessings are coming to you. Blessings are around you. But you need to, to forgive and you need to stand in your strength, in your own inner power. You need to be honest. You need to keep your eyes open in order for you to even realize when a blessing has come to you and be grateful for it. And be grateful for the past, even the traumatic bullshit that has happened. Because it made you stronger. And it's up to you to view it in whatever way you choose. But I would highly recommend learning to forgive. And again, forgiveness does not mean that what someone did to you was okay. It just means that you're allowing yourself to be happy. You're not allowing the burden of whatever experience to hold you back anymore. It is when you step into your own power that you will be free. But you have to be honest with yourself and you have to have the courage and the strength to do so. And know that the sun is here. The sun is illuminating for you with, with the blessings. And underneath that we have finding. Finding yourself. Going within. Figuring out who you really are. Being honest with yourself. Transformation. Loving yourself. It's like she's hugging herself. She's feeling her heart. And she's, she has found who she is. She knows who she is. She is in her own power. She is free. And that's what, what brings clarity to a situation. When you're honest with yourself. When you go within in order for you to really understand why you are the way you are. And to make the changes necessary in your life to better your life. Commitment. If you really want a commitment with someone, you need to know love is hard. Love is tough. It's not going to fucking be easy. But you need to find balance. You need to find reciprocity. You need to understand that love knows no bounds. That love is pure. If you want someone to be committed to you, you want someone to be honest to you, you want someone to be open with you, you want all of that, then you need to be that too. Lead by example. And it's not easy. And like I mentioned earlier, you know, if this is a twin flame dynamic or anything like that, then it is going to be hard. 
there's going to be again balance issues there's going to be difficulties there are going to be struggles but it's okay that's a part of the process a major lesson in it and I saw 02 2020 twos commitment reconciliation is just a word that came into my mind if you want that you need to be honest about it don't expect someone to read your mind and be like oh you know it's time If you want to reach out and say something, then reach out and say something. And you know what? Don't be afraid of, of what the person's going to say or not say. Because when you reach out, when you do your part, when you do your side of it, that is all you can do. And by that point, it is on the other person to come through or not but that is not a reflection on you that is just a reflection on them at that point it is their problem and if they literally don't want to forgive you and they want to just hold a grudge on you that's on them don't don't let that hold you back express how you feel and let it go and what I mean by that is like let go of the fear of what's gonna come if you express how you really feel when you express how you really feel it's going to be you know have you ever felt like something that you bottled up and you finally like let out and you just feel so relieved it's like the ten of wands in reverse the ten of wands being like burden to say the least that's what I'm feeling like here now since this reading was like I did get like love vibes from it I'm gonna pull ah. so these are the cards that that just flew out right now stay optimistic about your love life positive thinking first of all optimistic literally we had a card about optimism positive thinking and faith will bring you romance that speaks for itself that's confirmation for things that we have been talking about earlier. What's underneath here? Flirt. Retreat. It is safe to love and attraction. And underneath we have trust. I'm going to put these back and I'm going to shuffle. It is safe for you to love. And that was one of the cards that I just put back. Open your heart to give and receive the highest energy of all. Again, speak your mind. Speak your mind. It's okay. You deserve to say how you feel. You deserve to feel free. To express yourself. And not the side of you you just want people to see, but your true self. And to have faith and hope in whatever situation. You do you. You do you. <laughs> yes, you do you. You do your part. You express how you feel. And if someone wants to reciprocate, then they'll reciprocate. And if they don't, then you know, okay. And you can move on. I was always raised. raised. <laughs> if you want something, ask. If you need help, ask. What's the worst someone can say? No? Okay. 
At least you know now. If you never ask, if you never say how you feel, you have a 100% chance of not getting what you want. Now, if you say how you feel, now you have less than that 100% chance of nothing to a 50-50. Ask and you shall receive is something that just popped up in my head. Underneath, we have separation. So I feel like there is a separation, but perhaps you are trying to be optimistic or you are grieving about the separation, but you're trying to be optimistic for a future. Perhaps even for a family together with someone. I feel like this is bottled up and may never be really expressed. But I really do think that you should express how you feel. And we got retreat. It's time to disconnect from the world. What I'm getting from this, what's really calling out for me in this card is it's time to disconnect from the world. And what I'm seeing from that is like to shut out external influences on what you really want. It's time to be real with who you are and to show people the real you now of all times. And again, if people can't get behind you and support you, then why are they in your life in the first place? You know what I mean? And of course, there's always going to be people who, you know, it doesn't mean that they have to be converted or have your exact opinion or whatever, but there's a difference between people who love you and respect you enough to to let you be who you are. And there's a difference between people who who just don't. Now, just because someone doesn't like the kind of things that you do or what you're into or whatever, but they love you and they still support you and they still care about you and they still let you know that they're there for them, those are the kind of people that you want to keep around in your life. Not the people who act like they're there for you and then, like, you finally start to, to share aspects of who you really are and then where are they? They're nowhere to be seen. And then they start thinking that you're a freak and that you're crazy and that, you know, whatever. Why the fuck would you want to keep those people around you anyway? There are billions upon billions of people on this earth. Why are you going to waste your time with people who cannot learn to appreciate and understand you for who you really are and for you opening up and being who you really are. Be aware. Again, I mentioned earlier about people, places, things around you. I think this is a call to clean it up. To be aware. Be more aware. Because I feel like Perhaps there are energies around you that don't want to see you happy. And that may be hard to believe. And the hardest thing is that you never really know people's true intentions. And that's a scary thing as well. I feel like it's important for you to reevaluate yourself in order to have clarity to move forward in the direction that your heart guides you to, we always need to reevaluate ourselves. Again, not in a place of judgment, but a place of compassion in order for us to, to see the changes that we need to make in our life in order for us to progress in our life. But also to see the people places and things that hold us back that tell us we're not good enough 
excuse me, that tell us that we cannot do X, Y, Z. Be free to express yourself how you really, truly feel. People who really love you will be there for you no matter what. And people who don't, there's the door. There's the door. Sometimes you have to cut people out of your life because they just don't fucking get it. And it, it's not in a way, don't do it viciously. I don't think that's right either. Don't do it out of anger. Do it out of acceptance. Like, okay, you know, it, it's okay if you don't, if you don't support me. But just know that this is what I'm doing, and you're with me or you're not. And I love you, but if you're not going to support me, then you know I have to focus on surrounding myself with people who who see my vision and who support me in my endeavors and who who uplift my spirits not people who tear me down and tell me you're not good enough you're you're dumb you're whatever you're not talented you're whatever is shit your art your music I think this speaks for itself. Romantic feelings. Your feelings are real and worth exploring. Give your relationship a chance. Work on your partnership and true love. This is the romance of a lifetime. And then is safe for you to love is in the middle? I feel like perhaps, you know, bringing back... Um, about the Two of Cups and uh, the Lovers is this here. I feel like a part of your denial is about your feelings towards someone or something. That you want to give something a chance or you want... <laughs> I feel like you know this person is the one or... You, you want to give it another chance. You want a new beginning. You know it's true love. This is saying it is safe to love. First of all, again, know it is safe to love yourself. Know you should always love yourself. There may be children involved or you may want to have children with this person. Be honest with what you really want and be honest with the people around you with what you really want and go after it. Break the cycles in your life that hold you back. Reach your happiness. This card underneath is happiness. And New Beginnings was under that. If you want a new beginning with someone, you need to be honest. There are certain cycles that you may need to break. Certain things you may need to change first. I mean, that's all of us. We all have things to change. We all have things to work on. Someone who really loves you and who wants to stick it out with you will be like, hey, you know what? We both have our shit, but we can work on it together you know when you have your days i'm here when i have my days you're here for me too right new beginnings you have to you have to walk through that doorway you can look at the new beginnings and look at that happiness all you want but it ain't gonna mean shit until you cross the threshold until you say what you want. 
We have the sun and the moon. I feel like that that's bringing into our awareness again of transformation of a balance. I'm sorry. With the butterflies, the transformation. With the birds, is freedom. With the mountains, means there are going to be challenges, but you can overcome it. There's water, there's plants, there's nourishment, there's abundance. But you have to go after it. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was a lot today. And I, I'm very sorry, again, for my lack of energy and, uh, and such and my slow talking and everything. Um, thank you so much for sticking it out if you did. <laughs> thank you for being here. It really, really, really does mean a lot to me. I'm very grateful, you know, before I started doing tarot, you know, on YouTube, I was scared. I was nervous, you know, but again, it got to the point where I had to go within myself to be like, Hey, you know what? I do deserve this. Hey, you know what? This is valid. I deserve to be happy and I need to cross my threshold for my new beginning. And this is... I'm still new at, um, you know, YouTube. <laughs> but that, that was a choice that I made in order to create my own new beginning in order for me to to share my experiences and try to help people understand that they are good enough and that they can do whatever it is that they desire and set their heart out to do and that you do deserve love no matter who you are you deserve to be understood. You deserve to be loved. You deserve to pursue your happiness. You deserve to pursue your dreams, your ambitions, your goals. But you have to speak up for yourself because no one can speak up for you. You need to speak your mind so that people can understand you better. Or don't get mad when people misunderstand you. Or, you know, when people start asking you like, wait, what, what's your intention? If you're not clear about how you truly feel, then how could you expect people to really understand your pure intention? If you do not open up, how can you expect people to understand who you really are? Whew. Well, thank you so much again for being here. <laughs> I hope to see you in the next video. If you made it this far, then, you know, I would love to hear what you think. Um, and thank you so much again for being here. I will see you in the next video. <laughs> I really sincerely hope this helped. Have a blessed day. Blessed be. And I wish you the greatest happiness. Thank you. Bye.